Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Novak again. In this video, I want to tell you about something that happened. And uh, maybe other people are experiencing the same thing. Maybe you're not. But uh, what I wanted to talk to you about is I was cleaning out the canister filter, the ADA, and uh, it's been about three, four months at least before its last cleaning. And one thing uh, you have to remember about a lot of these cancer filters, whether the ADA or the Eheim, the old Eheim's 2217, 2215, uh, the F-Zone canister filters, they have a, a void in the bottom of them, or you can call it a plenum. These canister filters literally have a plenum built into the bottom of them, which means there'll be about an inch of space to an inch and a half of space in these canister filters where the water will come in to a plenum, and then from there it will distribute throughout the canister. Uh, the older canisters were built that way, and the reason they're built that way is because when water comes into the bottom of the canister, any solids, uh, rock, stones, gravel, sand will be heavier and it'll just stay at the very bottom. It won't come up into your filter media and help clog it up. This also includes any animal life that may get sucked up into the filter. It will go into the bottom, the little plenum that they have built in there. Then it will be sucked up through a grid and then that will be going through all the filter media you have, and then expelled back into the aquarium. Pretty simple, the way they design them. Well, the F-Zone's done the same way. The ADAs are done the same way. So I decided to clean out the ADA and took it over to the sink, took it all apart and everything. Like I said, it had been three, four months since I even cleaned it out. And uh, when I got to it, to my surprise, at the very bottom where the, you could say where the plenum is, because that would be the distribution of the water, so that therefore would be called a plenum, uh, I saw something moving around down there. And I thought, well, what's this? You know, what's this at the bottom of the canister filter? Now, this is off the 90-gallon aquarium that uses a wear. So the water goes over the wear. And then there's uh, two one-inch holes, and those go into the canister filter. It hooks up. I don't use a sump to keep it quiet, and it's very quiet because of that. So when I looked in there, I saw a fish, and it was a red-eye tetra. So I bought six red-eye tetras, and after, let's say, about a month or so, instead of having six, I only had five. It's like... Well, one of them disappeared. That's to be expected when you own a fish tank, especially a, a large fish tank that has, uh, you know, lots of plants, driftwood, you know, uh, hardscape. Fish can get lost in that and you'll never find them. So it got lost. I checked the back of the tank. You know, your, your normal things that you're going to check for. Where did this fish go? It's gone. Okay. Probably went in the back and died or something. I don't know. Being that it was relatively new, I didn't see it anymore. But there it was, swimming around. I caught it, and I thought, oh. So it was a it was a skinny guy. He was still alive, and I put him back in the tank, and uh, he's doing fine. You know, the fish is doing fine. But as I started emptying the water, I saw more movement at the bottom of the filter. What's this? As the water got lower, all of a sudden it was full of shrimp. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say I counted about 27 shrimp at the bottom of that canister filter. Apparently they had gotten in to the weir, got sucked up, and they have been living down there in the bottom of the weir of the canister filter. And apparently since that keeps sucking in food and stuff, Guess they had food. 27 shrimp 
is a lot of shrimp. And of course, I have the cherry sh shrimp, so uh, they were down there, and I was quite surprised to see so many shrimp because in the tank, once in a while, you'll see a mono shrimp pop up. Once in a while, I'd see a cherry shrimp. Did I feed them? No. You know, whatever they're finding in the tank is what they find, but you don't really see them very much. You'll see them on the uh, uh, fairy moss. You'll see that, the fairy moss I have on top of the tank. But uh, as far as seeing, you know, tons of them, no. The most you see maybe some days you'll find maybe five of them up there buried in the moss, you know, eating away, doing their thing. Uh, once in a while, I will see an amano shrimp. Now, a mono shrimp been in there for almost two years, as long as the tank's been built. And once, uh, you know, just the other day, I found an ectoskeleton of a of a shrimp, and it was a, a mono shrimp. So I know they're still alive because they're still molting. But uh, you really don't find them with the cherry shrimp. I don't find any ectoskeletons because they're so small. But you kind of wonder, well, where are these shrimp going? I put about 20 of them in the 90 gallon, but that was over, I'm going to say close to a year ago. And you, like I said, you see them once in a while, but not that much. So that was quite a surprise to see 27 shrimp in there. Now, I originally only bought about 20 shrimp and put them in the 90 gallon. And apparently they've been eating the fairy moss. Apparently what's ever in the fairy moss, they like and they eat. So I have fed them nothing special. If any loose food falls at the bottom of the aquarium, so what? I've even taken a flashlight and looked throughout the aquarium, what I could see without moving anything, where are these shrimp? But seeing that there was 27 down there in the canister filter, more than what I had bought, apparently they're living and breeding and everything else. Well, same thing happened to me over with the uh, Beta Aquarium. I set that up put some of that fairy moss in. I had plenty of it, and now it's growing quite a lot since I've set up that aquarium. Uh, once a week, I do a water change by the spigot, you know, and change some of the water, and uh, it's using a plenum, and I'm using the uh, uh, kitty litter in that. Once a week, I add iron to it, one milliliter of iron to that aquarium to help to the fairy moss stay green and grow. Other than that, nothing. Very easy aquarium to take care of. The bubbles are going slow, everything else. And then the other day, I'm looking at it, and I see a blue shrimp. You know, I got a picture of it, as you can see. It's not very clear, but I hurried up, grabbed my camera, tried to take a picture of it. But... How did that happen is I was changing over the 88 canister filter, the big one, the 22 liter one, uh, for the F zone, 15 liter one, to try that F zone out on the 90 gallon tank. And when I did that, there was about seven shrimp in there that apparently went into the wear and got sucked up in the canister filter. And, of course, in the F-zone, there's about an inch and a half of a plenum in the F-zone filter. And, of course, like I said, uh, on the goldfish tank, that plenum, there'll be sand down there from when the goldfish stir up the sand and it gets sucked up by the F-zone filter. And that heavy sand just falls on the bottom. It doesn't go up into the filter media. And, of course, when I changed it, there were seven uh, sh shrimp in there, cherry shrimp, all red. Some of them were lighter red. Some of them were darker red, but there were seven of them. I thought, oh, seven more got in there. So apparently shrimp are living in the 90 gallon. I just don't see them that much. Just once in a while, you'll see red in where the fairy moss is. So I took those seven shrimp. And I just dumped them 
didn't acclimate them or nothing, just dumped them where the bettas were. Figured, oh well. Um, shortly after that, never saw them again. I figure, well, if they made it, they made it. If they didn't, but just the other day, like I said, now that's been over, you know, a couple months or more. There's a shrimp. It looks blue. It pops up and it was, it molted. So apparently the shrimp are living in there. I'm not paying any special attention to them. The only thing they can eat is whatever food the bettas don't get or whatever is in the fairy moss. Effort on my part. Now, years ago, uh, talking quite a few years ago, I wasn't too lucky with shrimp. You know, you'd buy ghost shrimp um, or any of your fancier shrimp, you know, like your cherry shrimp or something like that, which would be more the most common shrimp. And they never seem to last very long. Uh, I've had shrimp, and if they lasted a month, I was lucky. And I'm thinking, well, what am I doing wrong? You know, what what is it that I'm not providing for them? And, of course, you you turn around and you think, well, there's, there's the special substrate they need and uh, the special dish, you know, to put in there so they can go get the food and and... Now, all I use is the plenum and the kitty litter, like that's basically 100% kitty litter in the beta container, and they're living and thriving with me doing nothing. Where years ago, I would have shrimp, and they just wouldn't, you know, propagate. They wouldn't live very long. People would say, oh, Lord. They're delicate and blah, 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 and the temperature, and you're not meeting their food requirements. Well, whatever, you know, all, you, we all heard the excuses of why the shrimp wind up dying. Now they, they're living, but they, they hide. They must be digging themselves into the substrate. Apparently, the kitty litter seems to be a substrate that they don't mind digging into, or they don't mind at all, because... I've looked at that aquarium with the bettas in it, and I cannot find anything yet. They must be existing because I took a picture of one of them months later, molting. So somewhere, somehow, they're in that aquarium hiding, and they must be coming out at night to feed on the fairy moss because I'm not feeding them anything special. It's just unbelievable how many people out there are selling shrimp, plus all the fish stores are selling shrimp, plus you can get shrimp at uh, PetSmart and Petco, so they're even carrying shrimp. And it's amazing to me the price they're asking for a little shrimp. They can't be paying more than a few cents a piece because if you're in the industry of fish, there's thousands of percent markup on fish, like a zebra dano. You can buy a zebra dano for, you know, pennies, and yet they may charge two, three bucks for a fish like that, where the store is only paying pennies. Uh, goldfish are marked up. Uh, goldfish, you can get them from the market, depending on what size you want. You can get them for anywhere from couple bucks, five bucks, ten dollars a piece. And you, and then when you go look at them at the store, you know, they're eighty dollars, a hundred dollars plus. You know, I know that's not what they paid because I've seen the market sh sheets that the store owners actually order their fish from. If you look at that and you see the price they're charging, it's outrageous. Thousands of times of what they paid for the animal, they're selling it to us for. And shrimp have seemed to fall into that category is extremely expensive for what you're getting. I don't know why it's that way. Maybe because people are being more successful keeping shrimp and they're so easy to breed because I'm always reading or seeing YouTubes that, 
oh, I bought some shrimp and they're breeding on me. So maybe that's the reason they charge more because they are so easy to breed. Uh, just like me, I don't do anything with my cherry shrimp and they seem to be multiplying. Uh, the fish don't seem to bother them. If you're out there looking for an aquarium for your first aquarium and you're looking for at least a 20 gallon, go with the 29. That's my advice. Don't, don't even waste your time with the 20. You'll be a little more versatile and you'll be very glad because then you get a taller fish inside there and it gives them more swimming room and you can really make a nice plenum, not taking up any room in the aquarium. And it uses the same lights and everything. So you could really have a wonderful aquarium because a lot of people do have small aquariums. Okay. So that's my advice for the thing. Let me know about the shrimp. And I wish everybody here in the United States a happy Thanksgiving. You know, may you prosper through the rest of the year. And uh, I want to thank you very much for watching. If you're first time watching, subscribe. I make videos all the time for you. A lot, sometimes I make some educational videos that get a little more complicated and just a simple video like this, but uh, it's more of a learning channel, more of, I try to stay out of the realm of your first time of, like other channels will explain to you repetitively, you know, a tiger barge or, you know, that, that kind of stuff. I have, I have magazines that are 40, 50, 60 years old that talk about the same thing they're talking about today. Exact same thing, you know, you're not learning anything new but that's what those channels do they basically just repeat themselves but i try to give something where it could be useful to the hobby so something a little different than what the other channels are so uh thank you very much for watching and uh happy fish keeping